Hi everybody. When you examine CPU measurements in the mainframe environment, you will see that there are two measurements that not many people know too much about. And one of these is titled PRISM Physical CPU Time, and the other is called LPAR Management Time. This video is the second video in a two-part series, and during this video I'm going to show you how these two measurements are reported and discuss their performance guidelines. Hi there, my name is Peter Enrico with Enterprise Performance Strategies and I'm a co-creator of Pivotor. My team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing usage of your system resources in the mainframe environment. We created our tool Pivotor so you can have a cost-effective solution for your mainframe reporting needs. If you do not already have Pivotor, chances are you're paying way too much uh, for your current solution and getting far less value. So. The two measurements we are going to discuss in this video are PRISM's physical CPU time usage and LPAR management time. If you want to know more about these two measurements, click on the associated links here and I will link you to part one of this video series. As a reminder, PRISM physical CPU time is the amount of CPU time PRISM consumes on behalf of all system images under its control. The LPAR management time is the CPU that PRISM consumes on behalf of every single system image. Today, these two me measurements are reported uh, for all your primary processor pools. That is, they're collected and reported for both your general purpose processors and your ZIP processors. The PRISM physical CPU time will be reported once per machine for each processor pool. So you'll have one for your general purpose processors and for your ZIPs and LPAR management will be reported for each system image for each processor pool. So for every individual system image, you'll have LPAR management time for your general purpose processors and for your ZIP engines. So let's take a look at these measurements in an actual report, and we're gonna be using Pivotor to look at those measurements. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you what the measurements look like, what kind of values we get for those measurements, and I'll point out some guidelines to help you understand if you're getting good or bad value with these measurements. So, okay, so let's take a look at a Pivotal report, and what we're looking at here is a report titled Keck CP LPAR Management Percentage. And it is on this report that we report both PRISM's physical CPU time usage, as well as LPAR management time for each of the partitions. You can see on this particular report is that we have an XY axis, where down here on the X axis we have the typical date and time of the measurement, and on the Y axis we have utilization. The utilization being reported on the y-axis is the utilization of the machine. Now on this particular report, we have a guideline here at 3%. And what that's saying is, is that we recommend that when you're running on a mainframe processor, an IBM Z mainframe processor, that no larger than 3% of the machine's utilization should be consumed by PRISM and LPAR management time combined. So that's a physical utilization number. That's actually a high value. That's just like an upper range of what we want to see. We never really even want to get close to 3%, but some customers will, depending upon how many uh, uh, LPARs or system images they have and how many logical processes they have relative to the number of physical processors. Now on this particular machine, what we see is we're way below the 3%. And down here for each series, we're going to see several numbers of interest. The first number of interest is this orange area, and you can see the flyover. And the flyover, the, the sticky, so to say, the post-it, says that this is for partition physical. As we discussed in my previous vis uh, video, there is no partition physical. It is just a bucket of CPU time that we think of as PRISM. And we can see here that this bucket of CPU time usually accounts for less than half percent of the machine, and that's very typical. This is a value you will see go up as you have more and more logical partitions, meaning system images, and as you have more and more logical processors configured to the system images relative to the number of physical processors for this pool of processors on the machine. Now, in this particular example, if we look at the very top of the report, we see that we're looking at just CP, CPU pool, and those are the general purpose processors. So this is the general purpose processors for the um, machine, and this is their physical utilization. 
Down below here, we have the serial number of the machine because this is a machine number. The other series here we have on the uh, chart is the LPAR management time for the partitions represented as a machine utilization. So for example, we can see here in this color here that we have a partition called PROD04 and this is the LPAR management just for PROD04. And then down here, much lower, we have one called uh, uh, the, the LPAR management time for DevL04 and then up here we see a little bit for something called TEST04. So you're going to get that for each pool of processor. This just happens to be for the CPP, CP pool of processors. Now the thing to note here, as I said, is we have a guideline of about 3% and you really don't want more than 3% of your machine uh, uh, being devoted to PRISM, physical, or LPAR management time. But always remember that utilization is for the entire machine, so also take into account the size of your machine. If you're one of these customers that has a 30-way machine, 3% of a 30-way machine is a lot of CPU, and my guess is you're not going to be anywhere close to 3%. But if you're in a machine where you only have, uh, in this case, maybe about four processors, chances are 3% is a really high number as well, but it's kind of on the upper bounds, and if you hit 3%, that's probably okay. You should see this value be relatively constant throughout the day. You wouldn't see big peaks or small valleys. It depends on the activity of the machine. Um, naturally, PRISM CPU time is going to be relatively constant, where LPAR management time may go up. And a lot of times you'll see it go up when you have some sort of vendor product on the machine, typically some sort of hardware collector, something that has to get to the hardware and is asking PRISM to execute instructions on behalf of that particular partition. But otherwise, you should see numbers around 1% to 1.5%. Again, your numbers may vary a little bit, but certainly our recommendation is not to go above 3%. And if so, we want to find out why. Again, the reason they would be high, physical, just has a lot of resources. So, you know, you have your system images and number of logical processes, so you can cut that down a little bit. Or it could be due to LPAR management time, which is usually a product on the system that is issuing all sorts of hardware instructions and doing things like that. If I look here, as I said, it's by serial number, so if I go back to the previous machine, this is the same report, but for a different machine, because we have a different serial number, and you can see this value is much less, so this is, this is a value that really heavily depends upon the machine, the configuration of the machine, and what kind of work is being done on that machine. And again, this is for CP CPUs. And finally, if I go down here, I'm going to click, and we're going to see that this is the uh, LPAR management for our ZIP processors. In this particular case, we only have physical utilization because the ZIPs in this particular workload were not executing any instructions relative that would cause PRISM to want to have to get involved. So as a result, there's no LPAR management time. And you can see here that the physical CPU time uh, for the ZIPs is very, very small. So altogether, these should be small utilizations. I hope this video helped. Uh, let me know. In the down, down below in the comments section, let me know what you think of this measurement, if you have any questions about its guidelines, or if you have any questions about the measurements in general. So thank you very much. Peter Enrico here, and uh, I'm looking forward to having you in the next video.